So in this video, I want to talk about non-competitive inhibitors. And I recommend you watch my previous video on competitive inhibitors. We're going to build upon those concepts, so I have a link of that video below. But again, let's say we have this beaker, and let's say we have this particular enzyme. And let's say we have a certain concentration of that enzyme of one nanomolar. And let's say we also have this substrate, and we know what substrates do. They bind to the active side of the enzyme, and then they're converted into products. They, they bind to the active side of the enzyme and are converted into products. So let's say we have this certain concentration of enzyme, and we have this certain concentration of substrate. We know with this particular enzyme concentration, this substrate concentration, we'll have a certain velocity rate. We'll have a certain amount of these substrates being converted into products per second. So let's say with this particular enzyme concentration and this substrate concentration, we have a velocity rate of one micromolar per second. Every second that goes by, one micromolar of these substrates are converted into products. However, we know, we learned in the previous video, as you increase the substrate concentration, you'll increase the velocity rate. So we know if we have a finite concentration of enzyme, then we know if we increase substrate concentration, we'll reach a maximum velocity. As, as we increase the substrate concentration, we'll saturate these enzymes and we'll eventually reach a max velocity rate. And let's say that Vmax happens to be 10 micromolar per second. Once we've, we've, create, we've increased the substrate concentration to create an absurd substrate concentration, we'd reach that max velocity of, let's say, 10 micromolars per second. However, now let's say we've added a, a non-competitive inhibitor. Let's say now we've added a non-competitive inhibitor. So what do these non-competitive inhibitors do? So let's say we, have a one, we add one nanomolar concentration of this non-competitive inhibitor. And let's say we have the, sa all this, the same exact situation as before, but the only difference is now we've added this non-competitive inhibitor. So what do these non-competitive inhibitors do? Well, what they do is they bind to the enzyme at an, as an, at an allosteric site, not at the active site. They bind at an allosteric site, and when they bind to that allosteric site, they essentially turn off the enzyme. So while these non-competitive inhibitors are binding to the enzyme at, the, at an allosteric site, the enzyme is turned off. It's temporarily out of commission. And then eventually the non-competitive inhibitor will, bi will bind off, it will bind off, then it'll bind to another one, temporarily putting this enzyme out of commission. Then it'll bound off, bind off, then it'll bind to another enzyme, making this enzyme not working. So again, that's what non-competitive inhibitors do. They bind to enzymes, and while they're bounded, this enzyme is out of commission. It's not working anymore. So therefore, we again, let's assume the same condition, so we have the same enzyme concentration and the same initial substrate concentration. However, now that we've added this non-competitive inhibitor, we know the velocity rate would decrease. Every second that goes by, fewer moles will be converted into products per second. We know originally without the inhibitor, the non-competitive inhibitor, we had a certain velocity rate. But now that we've added the non-competitive inhibitor, we would have a smaller velocity rate. The velocity rate would decrease because every second that went by in that one second time period, some of these inhibitors were bounded to the enzyme, turning off the enzyme. So in that, if, so in that one second period, fewer moles will be converted into products because some of those inhibitors were bounded to the enzyme. So while they were bounded to the enzyme, the substrate couldn't be converted into products. It wasn't able to be converted into products. So that makes sense. As we add this non-competitive inhibitor, the velocity rate will decrease. However, let's say we've added this non-competitive inhibitor. So we've added some of this non-competitive inhibitor. But let's say now, so we have this certain concentration of non-competitive inhibitors. But let's say we increase the substrate concentration. So as we increase the substrate concentration, we'll reach a Vmax. We'll again reach a Vmax. However, let's compare the Vmax in this initial situation without the, the, non the inhibitor, comparing the Vmax of this situation with the inhibitor. Notice that when we, with the inhibitor, the Vmax will decrease. So, so why with this initial situation, we, we were able to get a certain Vmax, but now with, uh, with, the non, with this non-competitive inhibitor, now the Vmax has decreased? Well, the way I like to think about it is we've added some of these inhibitors, these non-competitive inhibitors. So some of these non-competitive inhibitors have bounded to some of these enzymes. Some of these enzymes have bounded to these non-competitive inhibitors. So you can think, so even though we technically have a one nanomolar concentration of these enzymes, we, we effectively have a smaller concentration of these enzymes. We, we know at any given period, some of these non-competitive inhibitors have bounded to these enzymes. So therefore, some of these enzymes are out of commission. So, so the enzyme concentration is, is 
is effectively lowered. We effectively have a lower enzyme concentration. So maybe we effectively have a concentration of maybe 0.5 nano, nanomolar of these enzymes. So again, without the inhibitor, we had a certain concentration of enzyme. So with this concentration of enzyme, as we increase the substrate concentration, we were able to saturate those enzymes to reach a Vmax. However, now that we have this non-competitive inhibitor, some of these non-competitive inhibitors are binding to the enzyme, so some of these enzymes are out of commission. So we effectively have fewer enzymes. So yeah, even though we increase the substrate concentration, and let's say we increase the substrate concentration to an absurd concentration, it doesn't change the fact that some of these enzymes are out of commission. So therefore, we could increase the substrate concentration all we want, However, it doesn't matter how we increase the substrate concentration, we could increase the substrate concentration to 500 molar concentration. Some of these enzymes will be out of commission. So because some of these enzymes are out of commission, the max velocity will decrease. We, we have a decreased max velocity. So therefore, these non-competitive inhibitors decrease the max velocity. So therefore, the max velocity has been decreased. And this is different with competitive inhibitors when we learned in the previous video about competitive inhibitors because we know those competitive inhibitors bounded to the active site. So because the competitive inhibitors in the previous video bounded to the active site, we could overcome them by increasing the substrate concentration, reaching the normal Vmax. However, these non-competitive inhibitors essentially put some of the enzymes out of commission. So when the enzymes are out of commission, we have fewer enzymes, so therefore, even if we increase the substrate concentration, it puts a limit to the Vmax, so the Vmax has decreased because we effectively have a smaller amount of enzyme concentration. So therefore, non-competitive inhibitors decrease the Vmax. Originally, we had a certain Vmax. As we add the non-competitive inhibitor, the Vmax decreases. However, how does the KM change? Well, we know the KM tells us if an enzyme, the KM of an enzyme tells us about the affinity the enzyme has for the substrate. And if this enzyme has a low KM, then this enzyme has a high affinity for its substrate. But there, but it should make sense that how would this non-competitive inhibitor have an impact on the KM? It shouldn't. Why should this non-competitive inhibitor have an impact on the affinity? Uh, why, why should it raise the KM or lower the KM and therefore have an impact on the affinity this enzyme has for the substrate? It shouldn't. So therefore, this non-competitive inhibitor has no effect on the KM. Why should it change the KM? Why should it change the affinity this enzyme has for the substrate? That, that doesn't make sense. So therefore, non-competitive inhibitors decrease the Vmax, but they have no change on the v, Vmax, the KM. They have no effect on the KM. They, they, it had, these non-competitive inhibitors have no effect, don't affect the way this enzyme has an affinity for its substrate. So therefore, the point is, these non-competitive inhibitors decrease the Vmax, but they have no effect on the KM. The substrate affinity has no effect, so therefore the KM has no effect. So that's what non-competitive inhibitors do. They decrease the Vmax, but they have no effect on the KM. They don't have effect on the enzyme's affinity for the substrate, but they do decrease the Vmax. And you should be able to recognize that on one of these line weaver burke plots, where this represents the original enzyme, so, so this, this gray line, this gray line represents the initial situation. However, once we add the non-competitive inhibitor, we, again, the, the V, the KM stays the same, but the Vmax decreases. So the K, so this red line represents once we added the non-competitive inhibitor. And again, we see the KM stays the same, but we see the Vmax decreases. And we know the this intersect the y intersect is is the Vmax. So therefore, we see the Vmax decreased, but the KM stayed the same. So, so you should be able to recognize that how non-competitive inhibitors change these line Weaver Burke plots. They essentially push it up with essentially with the same KM but a different Vmax.